their free online courses and started implementing that into my, my PDs. You know, work smarter, not harder type thing. So when my, well, this past year, when my superintendent and all these folks came in and, and discussed it, my director of technology, and they started talking to the teachers, they started hearing the same language. The implementation of one-to-one, -one, the integration of technology language. And that is what got us one-to-one. -one. We'll be one-to-one -one next year. So I'm at Denby High School and Aviation Academy in Newport News, Virginia. It is an urban district, and we are very transient. We have the biggest ELL population at my school in the district. So I know that you know that we can connect. Right? I'm Carrie Fruin. I actually taught high school science for 25 years, and I am one of the same kind of coach, had this kind of journey, and in the end found a way to support teachers at Capella University so that they could support their kids and was part of the very beginning of the program that, you're, that you'll hear about. Well, not the, that you'll hear about, but we're not necessarily covering the whole thing. Um, I do want to point out Beth Mejia. She is, uh, she and I work together. We go hand in hand um, when we work with districts and do partnerships. And she can answer a lot of the questions if you have any. And even though we have not, I mean, you already seen Joseph. He's been doing this MC in. Nice job, nice job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the MC never gets it. So, <laughs> so just so real quickly, we just want to talk about what, what we're going to go through today. We're going to talk about this, th this whole idea of a support role. What is it? Who are you? Why do you do it? So on. What are some of the models and techniques? Uh, what kind of observations and feedback tools do we use? And that's gonna, we're kind of going to go through quickly on that. Um, it, there, it's a little, uh, some of you know it, some of you don't. We've touched on a lot of it here. We don't want to take a lot of time going over that, but realize that within the, Ed, the Edmodo group, the course, you'll have all the resources that we reference as well as this PowerPoint, so the resources you need along with our contact information, you can get it all there. Right, and we also know that a lot of you are teacher leaders, which mm -hmm. means that you're what, content team leaders, department team leaders. Somebody said, hey, he's good with the computer, he's the STEM leader or she's the STEM leader. So we're gonna, we're, we're gonna make this and mold this together to be fit all of us because in essence, we're a coach in the classroom with students or we're a coach with other uh, adult learners. So, um, uh, now, I, okay, I'm not going to tell an old, old journey, but I still remember how someone got to be the tech person. They were the first person who actually dialed into AOL and had email, and they then were the professional, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the role used to be, it used to be plug it in, call it in, all the hardware. I really appreciate your comment about not letting people say, I'm the cord finder. Mm -hmm. I'm not the physical fixer. Mm -hmm. I'm really going to instruct. We've got a new role, really. I mean, you're a facilitator. You're professional development sometimes. Mm -hmm. You coach small groups. You tech liaison sorts of things. And so we're going to hone in a little bit on those instructional coaching skills right. for those uh, of you that do that. But unfortunately, in our day-to-day -day walk, those things still there, aren't they? <laughs> You still, yep. because if, if, a teacher, if a teacher's computer does not work, learning stops. Anxiety builds, and then there's your resistance. One thing that you're going to find throughout this whole thing is that there's one word, and they all touched on it, is relationships. You have to be able to build relationships in order to work your magic. Because unlike the technology support people who actually fix it, they're reactive. We're proactive. We have to sell this thing. We have to make sure that they want this thing. So we're out there selling and all of that. So if something, if the tool that we're using doesn't work, we can't sell to the teachers. We have to get in there and maybe spend a couple of minutes and try to fix what we can just to show them that we want you to continue to learn. So yes, that doesn't go away, but this is where we are. So in terms of the tech implementation, research is actually, and, and I'm working on my degree now, so I use the word research shows all the time, and I go, where, what have I become? But it talks a lot about that this coaching actually does build this community in your school. Um, it, it can be a difficult change because of the fact that you're going from, OK, they were my colleagues sitting next yeah. door to me, yeah. and now all of a sudden I'm kind of playing this role, and how do I play that role? But it really does change the school culture once it's implemented. It, builds that environment of teamwork and the go-to, and then everybody kind of becomes a coach in their own way. So we know that it works, and we know what it needs to be. We know it needs to be collaborative. We know we don't want it to be 
evaluative, it, judgmental. I mean, it, it's going to shut down in a hurry. So it's non-evaluative. It's a lot of times hopeful, it, it's helpful if it can be self-selective, meaning that you can find people to work with other people that are going to work well together. We can't always do that, but we try. And again, here's this word again, relationship. Yep. It's huge. Yep. Yep. And what's the best type of coach? Anyone? What's the best type of coach? One that works to work themselves out of a job. When you instill in your teachers everything that you have, where they become self-reliant, you've done your job. Of course, your turn is on the cutting edge, so you'll bring it in. But once you have them, you have them for life. You've built that relationship, and you've established the culture. So in terms of coaching, and again, this is where some of you are newer, some of you are, are more experienced, you know this. Essentially, there's the four components of coaching, the identification of what's going to be working on and the modeling of this. Quite often, this happens because your district has implementation plans for some form of initiative. So you aren't always the one who's deciding. You aren't, you, some of you have them set the goals, but a lot of times it comes from, this is what we're now going to do in our school. You are in charge of helping the teachers do this. And this is where our roles come in at this observation working with the teachers and the feedback and reflection. So we're kind of honing in on that component after some of those decisions have been made. Now, again, we know not all of you are in that same role, but that's, that's where a lot of this information is going to really help you. But even if you're a teacher leader, you still have the CO role, mm -hmm. co-teaching, collaboration, co-planning. So all of those things are facets, whether you're an instructional coach or if you're a teacher. So everything that we're going to talk about applies to somebody. This also came up. We, it's very, we were sitting back there kind of whispering back and forth. Look, see, yeah, yeah, look. <laughs> so this kind of came up. If you look at this, I mean, these are, this is really, this is, again, your higher education. Probably you learned it in your bachelor's class about Knowles adult learning and how this goes on. And if you look at this, it's about how anyone wants to learn, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, 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 we know how people want to learn. We want this rationale and so on. And so we need to remember, like, again, a couple of people said, I think, I, I think everyone said it, yeah. Santa, in, yeah. in the panel, mm -hmm. is that we have to think about this adult learning. They are students. They are just as vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They are just as afraid. They don't want to look dumb. I mean, all of those same things that you can think about that one student that you just love to death in your classroom but the kind of the same things, we need to see our teachers the same way as that, that we're going to approach them the same way. And Mr. Bahula, I said it right, right? Yeah, he said yeah. it best. He said it best. Your students are no longer the young ones with parent permission. You're there tall and all of that stuff. But if you notice and if you think about it, it's the exact same thing. So we, so this is kind of we kind of categorize the whole coaching in, in three formats. You're gonna, you might be really instructive. This might be more of the mentoring. This might be more of the you are going to help them learn. This might be even more. I'm gonna model. You're gonna see me teach. Then you're gonna do this. There's also collaborative, and a lot of times that collaboration is okay. You've got people asking you, okay, I want to get to. Uh, a laptop's cart in my room, or I want to get to one-to-one. -to -one. And so their idea is you become this collaborative, how are we going to do this? And facilitative is really, again, coach yourself out of a job. Facilitative is really you are that support where you've got teachers rolling, they're doing all of this stuff, and you're just saying, what can I do to help? How do I stay out of your way? So those are kind of the three main categories when we talk about coaching and how we interact with people. Right, and with so many coaching models out there, as leaders, teacher leaders and coaches, you pick and choose what you need for the situation that derives. As you know, you have those hard-nosed teachers, those laminated, laminated lesson plan teachers, and then you have those first-year teachers that are like, oh, let's do this and this and this and this and this and this, and they're just all over the place. And then you have those teachers that are in the middle. Yeah, I can do it, but you know, I got this going on, this going on. Just give it to me and let me roll with it. So we're gonna try to address all of those types of learners. So we, we thought the relationship was so important. I actually said we actually need a slide. And this isn't so much about building relationships, but this is recognizing you as a human too. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that sometimes happen, and, and I know that when I was working with, with teachers in, uh, in a coaching role with the science, um, I wanted them to do, to do the whole hands-on science kind of thing. And I would go home and, I mean, I drank plenty of wine 
at night, <laughs> frustrated because it's like, why don't they see it? It's for the good of the kids and so on. <laughs> and then it's like, and I don't like this about this and I don't like, and it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We know, we know, you're a human, but these are some of the things that kind of like, okay, this is almost yep. your yoga questions. Yep. When you're gonna be working with these teachers, because some of them are gonna be easy. If it, you know, the easy ones are the easy ones. The difficult ones are the ones that you're really gonna have to hone your skill as a coach mm -hmm. and think about these kind of questions as, okay, how do I feel about this person? Am I, am I showing this? Am I showing that? Because it can be frustrating. It can really be frustrating. And if you don't have any hard-nosed teachers, what makes your job interesting? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, just think about it, reflect <laughs> on it. I think, who, who was the first year one? The first, <laughs> yes, think about what you came from and where you're at now. It was those hard-nosed teachers that kind of pulled you and made you grow and forced you to get better. Yeah, it's the growth mindset. I know we aren't here to talk about Carol Dweck, <laughs> but it's about Carol Dweck and growth mindset when you run into those right, folks. Right. So another thing that I sometimes, when I was very early on in this, I, 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 this is one 